Good morning, happy Tuesday. I pulled out Eastern Thought for the Western Mind. It's thoughts on Raja Yoga meditation. So we talk about the eight limbs of yoga. Raja Yoga is one of the forms of yoga and it's more um, spiritual um, studies versus physical asana, the poses that we do. Sometimes just randomly planting a seed of information during our class, I find helps set the tone so that we shift from Western thinking to something on a little deeper level, not just going through our day, acquiring things, our capitalist way of thinking, but something deeper, why are we here? Today I opened a book, a page on overcoming fear. And as I packed for, uh, I'm going on a vacation this summer, there was uh, an article I read and it said, quite often half of what we pack, physically pack in our bags is fear. Fear of something happening that didn't have, that did happen on another vacation. Fear of forgetting something. Fear of not having our comforts like at home. Um, and then you could also say that the invisible bag that we carry is also full of fears. So let's see what they say. Fear comes daily and often in our lives in forms of stress, worry, anxiety, and in a variety of other wasteful negative forms. For example, stress is one of the biggest diseases of the 21st century. Originally, the word stress was only used for pressure or tension exerted on a machine. Engineers build <clears throat> in a calculation for stress to ensure that the machine functions correctly. So it wasn't even a human word. Gradually, however, the term has become more and more popular to describe the state of human beings. When we try to describe stress, a whole chain of words comes out. Push, pull, pressure, more, or deadlines comes to mind to have to produce, to do more and more, to be better and better, creates a lot of tension, which comes from the fear of not being able to achieve the result on time. The materialistic values of getting, having, accomplishing, and outdoing others in the form of ambition, competition, and position produce a lot of stress. When we are stressed, we are certainly overloaded. We think and speak too much. We overreact, all of which affect both our mind and our body negatively. The worst thing is that this becomes a habit. So we set this tone of stress and we do, uh, there's a lot of research about cortisol and all these stress hormones and what they do to our heart, our arteries, our belly fat, our quality of sleep. Um, it becomes a habit which is often uncontrolled. And so the simple remedy of stopping and relaxing is now considered a remedy. Some even regard it as a useless waste of time or an indulgence. However, before we explore how to overcome fears, let us look at the type of fears humans suffer from. The fear of the unknown, like death or situations, loneliness, the future, illness, other people. This is usually the greatest fear of all, fear of others' anger, rejection, judgment, and violence, fear of failure, and fear of authority. And if you think about it, all of those go back to, in Buddhism, they talk about all of our suffering as humans go back to thinking about the future and the past, and those are fear-based. Rarely when you think about the future is it positive, say, goal setting or literally, I don't know, minutes from whatever it is you're doing. You're not going, oh, I'm excited to be doing whatever. Quite often it is fear-based. So if we were to focus only on feeling being doing now, we would free up all this effort and energy and thought and time on not worrying about the future and not contemplating or fussing about the past or overanalyzing. Uh, today, I thought I would pull out the healthy back deck, 50 simple techniques for pain-free back. I like this because back pain is quite often the main reason a lot of people come to yoga for the first time. And the physical yoga, the asanas that we're doing, which is only the third limb of yoga, it's not the first, so it's not even that important. Um, these yoga movements help us to relieve the pressure and quite often the back pain is a result of a combination of mental stress and fear and physical too much work sitting at a desk. Okay, we're gonna come to the mat. We're gonna do a few movements and find a way to bring peace and symmetry to our back. Take a moment first, taking the feet one or two fists width apart. Bring the bum towards the heel and then slowly, I'm gonna start with my arms before my back setting down a framework so that now I can tuck my tailbone, the lower back comes down, mid back, place behind the heart and my head is the final piece. 
For today, we'll keep the arms close by our side, palms turned up, spread the fingers. And just take a few breaths, check in with the quality of your breathing today. Did you rush to get here? Are you already tired and relaxed? Or are you stressed and have you been rushing around all day? Inhale, one. Exhale, let everything go. Inhale, two. Exhale, let everything go. So that more and more of the surface area of the back lets go and can release onto the mat. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale. Now let's lift our bum just enough to place the block at its lowest level, or a folded towel, or a flat pillow. And all I'm doing is elevating the hips. This instantly becomes a tiny conversion. Inversion. Hands by your side, shoulders back, and by lifting my hips, I'm able to roll the shoulders back, open more of the upper back, bringing into the floor and opening the front of the chest. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale. Okay, your choice now. Stay as you are or engage your glutes. Lift the bum a little higher and place a second block there. If you only have one block, you can turn your other block on its side like a horizontal wall. Shoulders roll under, palms turn up, chin lifts away from compressing out of the chest, that's to create the curve in our neck. And let's take five breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, <clears throat> exhale, inhale, exhale, and for the final one, elbows bend, bring your elbows by your side, palms by your side, ribs, fingers to the ceiling, and we're doing a bridge, but without having to use muscular effort. It's a great chest opener. Inhale, exhale, bring the arms back down. Let's bring one knee up and slide the left leg straight. You're just gonna pause here. It's a back bend, but it's also opening that left hip. Inhale, exhale. If this hurts your back too much, remove a block. Inhale, exhale, both feet down, switch. <clears throat> left knee in, no hands. Right leg extends, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Release both feet. Let's get rid of the block, one block for a moment. And if you're on a, a, a block on its side, you're gonna bring it back to the lowest. Right leg in, left leg extends. Two breaths, inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, lift that left heel, let the leg dangle. Inhale, exhale, and one more. Inhale, exhale, feet to the mat, switch. Left leg in, right leg extends, keeping the heel on the mat for the first breath. Inhale, 
exhale. Inhale, exhale. Next one, lift the heel and let it dangle. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Now we're going to take both feet to the mat. Option to add one more block in. Right leg in. If you can't reach, you're coming behind the thigh. Inhale. Keeping that left heel on the back. Whew. Leg is relaxed. Foot is softly, not even bent or flexed. Just relax. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Lift up that heel. Let the leg dangle. Some people do this at the end of their bed. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Switch. Left leg in. Right leg. Oh, we already did that. No, we didn't. Left leg in. Right leg touches down. Inhale. Exhale. I'm trying to keep the head still to the mat. Shoulders to the mat. Inhale. Exhale, lift up the right heel, dangle. Inhale, exhale, and one last time. Inhale, dangle that foot. Exhale, both feet to the mat. Now you have a choice. Actually, let's bring our knees up and in the air. So you're in a very supported legs up the wall. If it's too much with two blocks, you're bringing one or using none. First, the legs are relaxed. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, hold the right leg in the air, left leg dangles, option without hands to let that right leg fall towards you, and this is a deep stretch, hamstrings, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, both together and switch, right leg dangles, left leg, you're attempting to let it fall towards you, but not force it with your hands, inhale, Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Both feet to the mat. Oh, actually, no. One more time. Feet in the air. Now we do it wide. I'm going to hit the wall. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Close the legs. Feet to the mat. Get rid of both blocks. You'll notice a lot of treatment for back rests in helping the legs. Okay, let's do a quick spinal twist. Right leg in, left leg extends, left hand takes right knee over. You can either come to a stack of blocks or take it all the way over, keeping the right shoulder anchored and you'll feel a deep stretch in the chest also. Back to center, little boat. Left leg in, right leg straightens, right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist, come to the stack of blocks, or twist a little deeper, but you want to keep that left shoulder anchored. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, back to center, little boat. Feet in the air, let's take right leg, we're going to keep it up, interlacing your hands behind it, lower the left leg. Massage the right leg, and then taking your strap to the ball of the right foot, start to stir this leg one direction, then the other. Both straps come to the right hand, leg out to the side, I'm hitting the wall, left arm to a T. Let's take three breaths here. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two. Exhale, inhale three, exhale up on the sky, across the midline or all the way over and back to the sky, get rid of the strap, little boat. Feet in the air once more, right leg's going to lower down out of the way, massage the left leg, strap to the ball of the left foot. Stirring that leg a little, and then we'll take both straps and left hand, releasing that leg out to the side. 
Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale, and inhale, five. Up to the sky, strap it into the other hand and across the midline. Come back to center, get rid of the strap. Little boat. Roll onto your side and we'll pause in a fetal position on our side. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Press yourself up. We're going to come into seated for a seated cat cow before we do some of our cards. Hands to your knees. Belly presses forward and hollow out. Forward and hollow out. Forward and hollow out and coming to neutral. So let's see what we find in the healthy back deck. And I think you can get this on Amazon or Indigo. It's pretty old. I think I got it. Oh, we did the spinal twist already. We did knees to chest, trunk rotation. We did the bridge. We didn't do child's pose, because I'm going to say child's pose, we'll talk about it, is often used to help the lower back, but quite often the forward child's pose is really hard on some people's knees. It stretches the spinal column and lower back muscles and relaxes the back. Um, so traditionally we know this is our child's pose. You're supposed to go all the way down. I don't love it on my um, sinuses. So one version I do is side child's pose or on my back. And you don't even have to rock side to side, but just pulling it in, getting the benefits of child's pose without having to hurt the knees. Another thing that feels amazing is if you have someone at home is to help you um, gently, they put their hands on your lower back when your child's pose to help you deepen it if it feels good. Okay, another one. Let's see this one. Back bend. How is that copyrighted? Come on. It's not a copyrighted action. So we're going to come to standing. And sometimes I'll even do this seating in my desk. Hands to the lower back. And I'm pressing chest forward. Oh, and then look up. If my neck is sore, and imagine your whole back spine is going this way. If your neck is sore, you're staring forward. You're not taking the head back at all. Shoulders back, belly engaged. If you want to go deeper, you might start to look back. Uh, this to me reminds me similar of when we do the setup for fish. Hands behind you, chest forward, and looking back. That's a variation. Okay, the next one, kneeling lunge. So this pose can be uncomfortable if you have a sore knee. So one thing I like to do to improve that knee, I'm going to take my mat and fold it, possibly even three times, and create a good cushion. Let's take uh, right knee, actually I'm going to take left, right foot to the floor and left knee to that cushion I just made. It's upright. I don't even have to go very far. Now I personally don't see how this is a back stretch. You could walk this foot a little more forward. So now it becomes a hip stretch and a back bend and you could stay upright or if it's too much, come to the floor. Let's stay here for three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale, and I feel a deep stretch in the front of that left thigh. Inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Another version, I'm just going to come back and do uh, a stretch of that right leg. So all I've done is sit back, keep that right leg extended, and tiny forward fold. Switch. Left foot forward, right knees down. Choosing to stay here. Or, oh, oh, I don't love this. Walk this leg forward. So now it's a hip stretch. And it's going to help the lower back. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. And this knee doesn't go beyond the ankle. Inhale, two. Exhale. And inhale, three. Exhale. You're sitting back and stretching this left leg. Come on out. Oh. This is hilarious. So, when I had plantar fasciitis a couple years ago, 
And the foot doctor at the time said there's been an unprecedented number of people had plantar fasciitis, especially during COVID years. This stretch is for Achilles, for chest, for upper back, but specifically for the hamstring and the lower back. Calf stretch relieves pain, tightening in the calves, and stretches the Achilles. So my husband's had to use it for an Achilles issue. So you're gonna see my back. I love this stretch. So I'm gonna take one foot forward, left leg back, pressing into the wall, the hands are the height of my shoulders. Press the wall away and you're attempting to press that left heel onto the floor. No, I don't know what you can see there, not much. This is what it looks like from the side. So if you can set a timer on your phone, I was told 30 seconds on each side, three repetitions. And then if I did that for two weeks, guess what happened? The plantar fasciitis went away. Inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale. And inhale three through the nose, exhale through the nose and step back to the wall. Right leg out, left knee bends. Option to try to bring that heel to the mat. Inhale one, exhale. And I'm staring at the wall, pressing the wall away. Inhale two, if your heel doesn't come down and it's slightly lifted, that's okay. It might be that the calf is very tight. Inhale three, exhale, let's do one more. Inhale four, exhale, release. I love that stretch and I, I just can't brag about that stretch enough. It really did help a lot of things. Also, if you have benefits and you're getting massages, I often try to ask the therapist, can I have equal amount of legs done? Quite often they focus on your back and if they massage your legs, that is part of back health. This pose is a, a variation of legs up the wall. Something I want you to take note of. You can do it on the edge of your bed. You could lie on the floor and do your legs onto your couch or, or a footstool. Um, and that's for meditation. It's relaxing the whole body. And I love how supported the lower back is when we do that. Okay, now this surprises me. A quad stretch is for your back. Stretches the quadricep muscles and improves the flexibility of the hips, which also tug and cause lower back pain. So let's come up to standing. Option to use the wall. I mean, you can touch the wall, and then I'm going to try to grab one leg. Some people, if they can't grab the leg, they might make a little loop with their strap. Let me see if I can make this for you. We used to do this in class. You can make a loop with the strap. Ow. Then you would hook it on your foot. And look at that, I suddenly can pick up my own leg. So, some believe you should windmill the arm back and grab it from the inside. This feels very foreign in my shoulder. I like to bring my knee up, grab it, and then come back into standing. We wanna keep those legs somewhat together. If I do this, I'm hurting the sacrum. So bring the legs together, almost like you're a pirate with half a leg. So let's take three breaths, inhale one, Exhale, I'm trying to bring that heel towards the bum. Watch your knee. Inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Exhale, release. Other side. Grab the right foot. Left leg is standing. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. And inhale, three. Oh, that feels good. Exhale. Automatically, it's having us come into a squat. And I like to use this as a counter pose between many poses. Option to do this squat if you're not comfortable coming to full squat. Strengthens the spine, loosens the hips and lower back, tones abdominal muscles and opens your pelvis. Let's take for three breaths here. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale and inhale three, Exhale, then it has us doing, um, we've done lots of those uh, bridges, but we are gonna do one of these. 
This is bird dog. They call it balance stretch. Strengthens lower back, improves balance, firms and tones the buttocks, but it's also good for proprioception. And you know this is part of our regular practice. We don't, sometimes we forget to do it. Coming in a tabletop. Let's keep our right hand or left knee down. I tuck my left foot for stability, right foot back, left arm reaches, no higher than the height of the hips. Belly engage, clench those bones to center. Palm faces an imaginary line in the center. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Switch. Left hand down, right arm out. Reach, lengthen, engage, and press to center. Switch, let's go back to the other side. Left hand, right leg are out. And switch, last time, right hand, left leg are out. Undo, extended child's pose. And I can feel them tight in my upper back. I'm gonna widen my extended wide leg child's pose and try to bring my chest to the earth. And come on out. Oh, that felt good. Okay, one more. Now, interestingly enough, they call this a thorax rotation. We call this thread the needle of our shoulder, and it loosens muscles in the back, shoulders and neck, releases tension in the neck and shoulders, and stretches mid back. Let me show you on a dive. Let's come into tabletop. Left arm opens to a T, slowly open, even this twist and stack helps, and then bring it down and thread behind the right arm. Right arm bent at a right angle, oh, and turn and look at the ceiling over that right shoulder. Option to take right over the sky if your neck is comfortable. Undo, extended child's pose. Other side, left arm down, right arm open and stack. Thread the needle. You're pressing the nails of the right hand down into the mat. Left arm is staying at a right angle or opening all the way up. Undo, extended child's pose. And come on out. Oh, that was awesome. We haven't done that enough. Sometimes you guys remind me when we need to do back things. Cat cow, we did that. And let's finish with a gentle neck stretch while we're seated in Sukhasana or sweet seat. Sometimes neck work is just enough to help the back, especially if you're in a seated job or have a long driving ahead of you. Sitting up nice and straight, left ear, left shoulder. Inhale, exhale. And hands can be on the floor or resting on your knees. Inhale. Exhale, upright, let's do the other side. Right ear, right shoulder. Inhale. Exhale. And once more, inhale. Exhale, back to center. Today, I pulled this book that I absolutely love. Indigenous author, Richard Wagamese. This book is called Embers. And it's little writings, but he's also a famous poet. Um, so the first page I open, I love this. When I was a kid, I dreamed of traveling the world. I called it going to sea. My adoptive parents laughed, assuming that I was misspelling a common word. I wasn't. The idea of the, the idea of the world, the wide world filled me with wonder and I wanted to see. I'm still like that. The world beckons me beyond wherever I am. I want to see the intricate and the expansive the gamut of emotions on people's faces, the secret lives of animals, the acts of love, the regal quiet of old people, children laughing, the acts of wonder that arise from this creator's hand in everything. That reading is so simple and it goes back to the idea of creating the life that you wanted to have. First, you need to think about it. Then you need to talk about it with people that you care about. Maybe you need to actually make a vision board and write it down. But nothing is out of your hand's reach, especially you won the golden ticket. You live here in Canada. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.